Okay, we're doing the second part of lesson 4.1 now. And this is called triangle sum properties. All right. Hopefully you remember what the word sum means. It means we're adding. Sum is the answer to an addition problem. Okay, so we're going to be adding some things together in this lesson. All right. First one is a theorem that you probably already know. You may not have known the name of it, but it's called the triangle sum theorem. It's got three stars. It's a really important theorem. We're going to use it a lot throughout the year. Okay, so let's draw a triangle here. We have three angles. Let's call them angle A, angle B, and angle C. The triangle sum theorem says the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C always equals 180 degrees. Okay, take the three angles inside a triangle, add them up, it's going to give you 180 degrees. All right? Now, I'm not going to go through the full proof of this one, but I'm going to show you real quick why it works. Okay, so here we go. This is why the triangle sum theorem works. Now, we've answered this question back in chapter 3. If I have a line and I have a point up here that's not on this line, how many lines can I draw through this point? Well, remember the correct answer is an infinite amount, but of that infinite amount of lines, how many of them are parallel to this one? Well, just one. And we learned how to do that with our compass. Right now I'm just going to kind of sketch it out. So this is parallel to this. And I'm going to stretch this out as well. Okay. Now, angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3. They're all different. I'm going to call this angle 4 up here and angle 5. Now what we know is we know that angle 1, angle 4, and angle 5 add together to give me 180 degrees, a nice straight line. It's kind of like a linear pair, but there's three of them. You know, maybe we could call it a linear trio or something like that, but there's no such thing as a linear trio posture. If there's a linear pair posture, we could do a little angle addition as well. But all three of these are going to add equal 180. Okay? So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180 degrees. However, look at angle 2 and angle 4. We've got parallel lines. This is functioning as a transversal. We just dealt with transversals in chapter 3. These are alternate interior angles. So we know that angle 2 and angle 4 are congruent, which means they have the same measure. So instead of angle 4, I can substitute it with angle 2. And then let's look here at 3 and 5. Same idea. This side of the triangle is now functioning as a transversal. 3 and 5 are on opposite sides of the transversal. They're in between the parallel lines, so they have to have the same measure. So I'm going to substitute, and look what I get. Measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 equals 180. The three interior angles have to add to equal 180 degrees. These three added to equal 180. We substituted 2 for 4. We substituted 3 for 5. So 2 went in 4's place. 3 went in 5's place. All three interior angles must add to equal 180. That's kind of how that proof works. All right? Exterior angle theorem. Two stars. We use it a fair amount. Okay? It's helpful to know. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Okay, so I've got this angle here, and remember we have an exterior angle, we extend it out so we have a linear pair, so I'm going to talk about this angle here. All right, so let's call this angle 1 and angle 2, angle 3, and angle 4. Now, 2, 3, and 4 don't have the same measure. I, I do have the same marks on them, um, but they, they don't necessarily have to have the same measure. I, I don't really want to put 4 marks on this and so on, so just realize that's what's going on. All right, what happens here is the exterior angle theorem says that the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two non-adjacent interior angles. Okay, so I'm going to say that again, you can write it down, and then I'm going to say it a slightly different way as well. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two non-adjacent I could spell it would help non-adjacent interior angles 
Okay. Now another word we can use instead of non-adjacent, I've seen this other books use it as they say two remote interior angles. Okay, so you might use the word remote right here instead. Now what does remote mean? Well remote, like a remote island, is an island that's far away. Uh, remote control lets you operate something from far away. It might be your television, might be a, a race car, you know, one of those little cars, or it might be a like a model airplane or something like that. But this just means far away. Non-adjacent means not next to. So either way it's going to work. Two is adjacent to one, so we're not talking about that one. Two is also right next to one. It's not far away. So three and four are the two angles we're talking about. So what this theorem tells us is that the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four. Now the proof on that one's not too difficult either. I'm not going to go through the whole proof, but I'll show it to you really quick. Okay. So we had, I'm going to give you the same exact angle numbers so we don't get confused at all. So angle two was here, angle three, angle four, and angle one was outside. Now we know that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees. It's a linear pair postulate. We know that the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four equals 180 degrees. That was what we just talked about with the triangle sum theorem. Since they both equal 180, we can skip the 180 and we can link this with this using our transitive property. So the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two, skip the 180 here, skip the 180 again, and I can write all this out. So the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four. Then you'll notice if I subtract the measure of angle two here, it cancels. I subtract it on the other side of the equal sign, it also cancels. So I get the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four. And that's it. That's the proof. Okay, so it starts off with linear pair postulate, triangle sum theorem, and then transitive property and subtraction. And that's how the proof works. Not too difficult. Okay? All right, last one. This one's got a funny name. It's called a corollary to the triangle sum theorem. A corollary is a statement that easily follows from something else. So triangle sum theorem, we know that all three angles add equal 180. What this is saying is it's so easy, right, that it's just super easy to figure out. Um, the proof would be really easy. That's why it's one star. We don't use it a ton. But this is what it says. It says if you have a right triangle, okay, in a right triangle, the two acute angles are what? Let's think about it. Let's call this angle one and angle two. We know that all three angles add equal 180, triangle sum theorem. We know that this right angle is 90. So if I've used up 90 degrees, how much does that leave for these two? Well, it leaves 90, right? So these two have to add together to equal 90. Well, what word means they add together to equal 90? Complementary. And that's all the corollary says, is that in a right triangle, it only works in a right triangle. In a right triangle, the acute angles are complementary. The measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 90 degrees. And that's it. Okay, let's apply these two, a couple of these theorems now with some algebra problems. Okay, so first, what do we know about all three angles inside a triangle? Think back to our theorem we learned earlier about the triangle sum theorem. We know that all of these angles added together have to equal 180. So our algebra will say something like this. 2x plus 3x plus 5x minus 10 equals 180. I don't really have to put the degree symbol. Right, like terms, 2x plus 3x is 5x, and 5x plus 5x is 10x, minus 10 equals 180. Add the 10, this cancels, we get 10x equals 190. We divide by the 10, this cancels, and I get x equals 19. Now let's check our answer and see if it actually makes sense. So we come back up here, 2 times 19 is 38 degrees. 3 times 19 is 57 degrees. 5 times 19 is 95. 
95 minus 10 is 85 degrees. Okay, now if we add this up, we should get 180. Let's see, 38 plus 57 is 95. 95 plus 85 is 180 degrees. So our answer does make sense. It's always good to check to see that your answer makes sense. Okay, let's look at this one. Go ahead and copy that down if you need to. All right, now this is not the triangle sum theorem because this angle is outside. It's an exterior angle, so you gotta remember your exterior angle theorem. Exterior angle theorem, remember, said that this angle, 18x minus 20, equals the sum, sum means I'm adding, what am I adding? The two remote, far away, the two non-adjacent interior angles, so 86 plus 6x plus 2. Okay, let's combine a little bit of like terms here. 18x minus 20 equals 6x plus 88. Now subtract the 6x. This cancels. I get 12x minus 20 equals 88. I'm going to add 20. This cancels. 12x equals 108. Finally, I'm going to divide by 12. I'm going to get x equals 9. All right, let's check our answer and see if it makes sense. 6 times 9 is 54. 54 plus 2 is 56 degrees. 18 times 9 is 162. And 162 minus 20 is 142 degrees. Now let's add. 86 plus 56. Does that equal 142? And the answer is yes, it does. So my answer makes sense. That's it. Those are your theorems and your applications of those theorems. We'll see you guys in class.